In America, we love our cocktails, and our country produces some of the most well-known spirits across the globe. You want a good whip? But did you know there are world-class spirits being created in your own backyard? The little company in Detroit beating out the huge conglomerates from around the world was exciting. Craft distillers are reshaping and growing this industry. So we're making a lot of the traditional type spirits, but we're also putting our own twist on it. Hear the stories of the men and women behind this movement right here on Craft Spirits Nation. Lisa, I am super excited about this show of ours where we get to explore the craft distillery industry. Yep, me too, Mitch. Today we're in Corktown at 2 James Distilling, and as you can see, they've got a lot going on. Coming here for a couple of years, and they have one of the best weight staffs and drinks anywhere in Detroit, Michigan. I'm from Ann Arbor, and I always come to Detroit, and this is my hangout in Detroit. It's a local, like, kind of bar as well. But it's unique enough, so it's not just like every other place that you'd go into in town. I can't seem to get away from uh, the bourbon. It's definitely my favorite. Two James Distillery opened their tasting room doors in 2013. But why Detroit? What brought David Landrum, one of the founders of Two James, to this historic Corktown neighborhood? So I actually grew up about four miles that way, uh, west of here. So coming back home was, was a, a big thing for me. But I think what se separates us, obviously we're the first distillery in Detroit since Prohibition. So we we're the first ones to bring this back to you know, my hometown, which feels great. So uh, Two James Spirits, where does the name come from? So when we were deciding uh, what to call this concept that we, you know, was just kind of burning around in our heads, you know, we started throwing out these really cool sounding names. You know, they sound great but they really didn't mean anything. My father had passed away in uh, 2000, really untimely, very young, and the other founder's father had passed away a few years prior to us starting this business. I had asked him, hey, by the way, what was your dad's name? You know, and he said, James. Wow. And I, it was kind of like that Blues Brothers moment with the light shining through. <laughs> you know, I was like, did a backflip and said, two James, right? <laughs> but no, it was, that's what it was. I think I said James and James, and then I said two James, and, and that was it. So that really, on top of it being like a really good bar call, it's two syllables, it's kind of like everything they tell you when you name something to have. So besides that though, it took on a, a whole new meaning because now it's like, oh crap, now everything I do needs to be the best I can do it because it's honoring my father. In addition to family pride, Two James Spirits tries to use as many Michigan products as possible in their distilling process. Definitely great agricultural abundance here. I believe it's second to California in terms of diversity in agriculture. So if our catcher's rye, it's 100% rye grain. We work uh, primarily with a farm that's about 40 miles from the distillery. So we know the farmer, we go out there a lot, can see the rye grain being planted, harvested, um, and having that relationship with the farmer has been really rewarding and kind of makes it all uh, extra special in that field to bottle experience. I love bourbon, right? So I come in here, I know I'm gonna order bourbon, but I see that there are a lot of other varieties of products that you have. Can you sure. tell me a little bit about what you guys offer? Everything from absinthe to white whiskey. Um, we do a smoked whiskey, two different kinds of gin, a barrel aged gin. This is actually our first barrel of, uh, of rye whiskey. This is the one we always check just to kind of see where the product's going. Okay, very so good. It's getting close to, this is a little over three years old at this point, but we'll pull a little bit out. And what's this tool that you've got here? This is actually a whiskey thief, so okay. it's, a, it's a good name. Oh yeah, I'll take some of your whiskey thief. You know, give it a good whiff. It's that really kind of nice rye cereal note. Age is good, the older it gets, the better it gets usually, but there is there's sort of that tipping point. American whiskeys is about, you know, the average age is, is four to six years. So that's okay. kind of, that's the range that, that we're shooting for. I mean, right now we're, we're hand selecting barrels that are accidentally better than the other ones. Okay, um, okay. So we, we, we pull some of the ones that are aging really well that, you know, the, the good quality oak and it varies from barrel to barrel. We can barrel, you know, four to five barrels at one time and one will stand out as, and just be, you know, head and shoulders above the rest, even though it's exactly the same. The ones that are really high quality right now are, are ready to go and we don't want to let them sit around. And... It's a challenge of a, of a product that 
that has a timetable to it. It can't necessarily be rushed, even though even though different barrels are apparently are blossoming at different times. Yeah, those late bloomers and there's right, right, bloomers, right. Say, yeah. The best part about the job is, is really that experimentation and kind of you know starting with it with a with a good solid base in, in in tradition and and then kind of seeing where where that where that can take us and finding finding our voice in the market is you know is kind of is the key. And people flock to the tasting room to try what Two James has to offer. And don't worry if you're new to the craft distilling world, their staff is here to help. The staff is fantastic, friendly, bright. They've got great recommendations of places to go if you want to go out to dine or, or you know get a bite to eat. They're just really knowledgeable and very experienced. They have the best cocktails in town. Honestly, they do a great job. The way this guy makes it right here, top notch, one of the best. So, Lisa, how so you doing? Andreas, I'm well, how are you? Doing wonderful. I think it's drink time. I think you're ready for it. You've been working hard all day. Let's get started with something. What are we making first? Yeah, we're gonna be doing a Sazerac. So traditionally, a Sazerac was invented in New Orleans, uh, always made with rye whiskey, traditionally. So we're gonna use our catcher's rye, uh, which has a lot of nice like dried fig, plum notes. It's not your average rye, it's just, it really shines through in a Sazerac. It's cool because we're also gonna be using our absinthe. So Ooh. it's sort of like an all-inclusive resort. We have our absinthe and we have our rye. So we're gonna start with one Demer sugar cube, some pesto bitters. So you're just gonna muddle that up. So we're just gonna add ice, and I'm gonna have you pour, just like, just count to four seconds in there. Oh, you can keep going. Oh, I thought you said four. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Oh, that's a lot, I think. No, that's perfect. <laughs> So you can stir this. All right. Remember, just hold at the top like a little pencil. So I just put a little absinthe in here. We're just gonna do a little absinthe rinse. Now, absinthe, it's pretty strong, isn't it? It is. Ours is 120 proof. It's an old traditional French recipe. So then we're just gonna slowly pour that in the glass that's rinsed with the absinthe. Put a lemon peel in there. And there, you got a little Sazerac. Delicious. I just love drinking these, any setting. You know, it sort of brings you back. Look, I'm in New Orleans or something. It has like a heritage kind of feel. Absolutely. The support we received in the taste room has been just beyond our wildest dreams. So we get people who are locals who live in the neighborhood, so a lot of great regulars coming in from Corktown and different neighborhoods in Detroit. We get some people who travel in, but it's always been really just a great mix of people coming in. This is one of the friendliest places in Detroit where you can come and meet people. I probably met more interesting citizens of the city and people from other cities that come here than in any other establishment in Detroit. I love that about it because we, we produce really great cocktails, it, not in a stuffy atmosphere. It's kind of like your local neighborhood bar with elevated libations. Tito's handmade vodka was started in 1995. There'd never been a legal distillery in Texas before. Bought this land out here. It was in the middle of nowhere when I bought it, but uh, the price was right, and so it's home sweet home. And so I built a little 16 gallon pot still and put it on a catfish fryer, and that's kind of the start of Tito's handmade vodka. I think there's a lot of things that make Tito's vodka different. We like to make vodka with some body in it, so it kind of tells a little story. The pot still is a big part of it. We use 100% corn, it's gluten free. Won the ultimate cocktail challenge, best vodka and tonic. Won the World Spirits Competition, unanimous judge's choice. Best vodka out of 72 vodkas. There's nothing better out there. If I found a better vodka, I'd drink it. Tito's handmade vodka is the best because of their handmade process. No matter the size of the still, they do it the same way every time. Their concern is about the product in the bottle. No frills, no fancy packaging, just the best possible vodka they can put on the market at a reasonable price. You can find Tito's Handmade Vodka all over Michigan at your local neighborhood Meyer. Pick up a bottle and experience the clean, smooth taste that is now known around the world. Tito's Handmade Vodka, America's original craft vodka. Next up on Craft Spirits Nation, we stay in Detroit and we stay committed to quality. Whatever our brand is that's on that back bar must be the best in its category. And then we journey to the west side of the state where a well-known beer maker is putting their mark on the distilling industry. Our brewers hate to make the wash, but they love our whiskey. That's all coming up on Craft Spirits Nation.
Here at Perrin, no problems is more than just a beer. It's the way we brew and it's our way of life. I'm John Stewart, Director of Brewing Operations here at Perrin Brewing Company. I am proud of the team I put together. I don't look to accomplishments, but experiences with my brew brothers. I deal with a lot of problems throughout the day, and MMA gives me the opportunity to vent my frustrations in a socially acceptable way. No Problems 15 Pack available in stores now. You see over there? That proves my point perfectly. That's what girls are looking for these days. The loud, obnoxious party boy. But over there, that's what women are looking for. The strong, confident guy with a career. So what you're saying is, girls like $80,000 worth of beer-soaked debt and smart women appreciate a hard-working, skilled tradesman? Exactly. Fat, eating and cooling tradesmen are in demand. Go to Northwestern Tech and become an HVAC tradesman in 10 and a half months. After over a decade away, the Lincoln Continental is back for 2017, reimagining Continental's classic comfort, elegance, and power. And it's here at Star Lincoln, twin turbo, 400 horsepower engine, 30-way perfect position seats, 19-speaker Revel audio. Experience the Star treatment and drive the new 2017 Lincoln Continental, legendary car, legendary dealership. Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln at 12 and Telegraph in Southfield. So Lisa, for our next stop here on the show, we're going to be staying in Detroit with Valentine Distilling. And you know Mitch, you might think of it as a local place, but it actually has a very global reputation. I really like the ambiance. I think that it's got a great atmosphere. It's really inviting. We walked in, she asked us if we'd ever been here, kind of went through the five different alcohols that they make. I feel very educated now. Valentine Distilling released their first bottle of spirits 10 years ago, and since then they have grown from a tiny production area to a space that's quite a bit bigger. So we're standing in our new distillery, relatively new distillery. Okay. This we refer to it as Wanda, it's our production facility, 15,000 square feet. It is one of the largest micro distilleries, definitely in the Midwest and one of the larger ones in the country too. You weren't always uh, in the distilling business. In fact, at, at one point, for some years, you were in New York on Wall Street. So what exactly led you to, to this place you're at now? Yeah, I mean, you know, I spent a good 10 years on Wall Street, and it really, there came a point where it was an acknowledgement of what has happened to American manufacturing, and frankly, still is happening. So the way things used to be made as opposed to mass production, and hey, let's just make things as quickly and cheaply as possible. Realizing that that was going on, one night literally looking in the bottom of my martini glass, I was like, hey, let's make some world-class spirits in, in the United States for one, and then wanted to come back to my home state, but also the former manufacturing capital of the world. That was really important to us to show that, hey, this, this city can still do it better, this country can still do it better. And making craft spirits better than anyone else is the overriding philosophy at Valentine. So we aspire the best we can to never put anything out unless we absolutely love it. And we've been very fortunate and very blessed to be in a position where we can do that. From day one, we never set out to make spirits that were good for Michigan or just a, a little a nice local distillery. We wanted to put a mark on the world stage. We want these things to compete nationally and internationally to show that, hey, American manufacturing still does it the best. Valentine's Vodka was named Best Vodka in the World at the 2016 World Vodka Awards held in London. And if you look around their production facility, you can't help but notice all the banners they have hanging celebrating their awards. It is honestly more of a reminder uh, to Rufino and myself and the rest of this, this company Every day you can hang another one. Every day you can go out and do a little better. Every year is a new year, so uh, it's a nice reminder to, to aim a little high. And, and obviously, we uh, being big Red Wings fans, we're very uh, uh, <laughs> intrigued by the idea of hanging banners from the rafters. To try some of their award-winning spirits, you can visit Valentine's Tasting Room in the middle of Ferndale. That's where we met Nick, a liquid chef, ready to show off what Valentine has to offer. We're gonna do a little martini. We're gonna add a soft flavor from the spirit garden. Outside, we have a little garden. 
When Valentine first opened, we just had vodka. I came up with the spirit garden. Growing up being mostly Italian, my grandmother had a backyard full of raspberries and blueberries, and she would walk me around as a little kid. I'd say, here, smell this, I'll smell this, and taste this. So all those smells and flavors, they have stuck with me, whether it's food or cocktails. So this is what we're doing today. We're implementing a little spirit garden, sage, and a dash of plum bitters. You know, I love this, the white blossom vodka that we have. So we use a little elderflower and a little grapefruit peel. You have not seen a vodka like this on, on a back bar. So what I like to do is just brush the inside with the plum bitters and the sage oil. So this one reminds me of driving up Old Mission Peninsula up north. Cheers. 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 I'm consumed with the, sa the sense of sage and how smooth the, the vodka is. The spirit not only goes in the cocktail, but it sits on top. So you do get that sense. It's like talking about a, a great album or a movie. I feel the same way about a cocktail, that you can have that conversation. You can geek out on it a little bit without sounding too trendy, I guess. You would think with the amount of awards that Valentine is winning for their spirits that they would be pumping out new products left and right. But that is not what Rufino is all about. Let's not do a whole bunch of things mediocre. Let's just do a couple things and do them the best that we can. What's really most satisfying, and, I, and I've said this from day one, I'm not gonna be happy until not another bottle of Grey Goose is sold in the state. <laughs> when I hear somebody say, you know, this is better than that, or I enjoy this over that or whatever, that's really what means a lot to me because that means that people are respecting something that's made local and made by hand with actual American labor. Don't buy us because it's local. You know, buy us because we're rated higher than Goose. You know, all, everything out there after this world championship, we're not a, a local distillery, we're a distillery that happens to be where you live. And what does the future hold for Valentine? We found the best vodka in the world. It was from France or, or Russia or Poland. And I think the United States deserves to be known for a world-class vodka. We think the people of Michigan deserve it. We certainly feel the people of Detroit deserve it. We just want to continue to do it the best that can be done. You have seen these craft distilleries and their products. Now, where is the best place to find them on store shelves? The home for the widest selection of local craft spirits and the lowest prices allowable by law is Meyer, a Michigan company that supports Michigan artisans. Meyer has been great for us and they actually picked us. We were one of the first micros that they, they picked up years and years ago. Terrific. And they really had foresight that this was going to become an industry and now they have an entire section devoted just to Michigan spirits. So they're really on the forefront. Meyer was a very early, uh, you know, supporter of New Holland. Um, the relationships uh, we had, family relationships with one of the buyers uh, for the category back in the day. We wouldn't be where we are today without Meyer. Uh, there's no question about that. Meyer has have been really great supporters of the brand, which we definitely appreciate their authentic support of local products and local producers. It's definitely an authentic approach to it and they definitely have a real desire to represent local products in the store. So we've seen it outside of Spirits with companies in just our neighborhood with like Hacienda Chips. They've been a huge supporter of them as well. So definitely a great relationship. Discover something new, discover something local. Discover the best craft spirit selection at your neighborhood Meyer. Coming up next, we finish out the show with some hard work. It's kind of a sweet gig. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We're paying a visit to New Holland when Craft Spirits Nation returns. This is the middle. A place where somehow common sense just seems a little more common. Where people come together, look each other in the eye, and get to work. Our hands may be callous or sometimes sore, but we raise them quickly and lend them easily. Because this is the heart of the heartland. This is Michigan, and we're big believers in more. 
like we can always do a little more. Give a little more. Love a little more. And find ways for our families to have a little more. We were born and raised here, and for 80 years now, we've made it our business to do whatever we can to help people have and do a little more. I know a little something about getting notice. And well, that's what it's like when you graduate from Northwestern Tech. Because all over Metro Detroit, heating and cooling companies are in need of well-trained technicians. If you're looking for a career in HVAC or commercial refrigeration, the best place to start is Northwestern Tech. Take it from me, it's nice having companies compete for you for a change. Northwestern Tech, the HVAC school that works. After over a decade away, the Lincoln Continental is back for 2017, reimagining Continental's classic comfort, elegance, and power. And it's here at Star Lincoln, twin turbo 400 horsepower engine. 30-way, perfect position seats, 19-speaker Revel audio. Experience the star treatment and drive the new 2017 Lincoln Continental. Legendary car, legendary dealership. Hoot McInerney, Star Lincoln at 12 and Telegraph in Southfield. Well, Mitch, we're wrapping things up at New Holland but it doesn't really look like we're in a cocktail lounge. <laughs> not very much. With New Holland, not only are they pulling great stuff out of the barrels, they're also making some really cool stuff with the barrels, including pieces of art. It's really great, um, very inviting atmosphere, very fun, friendly. I'm coming here more for the drinks, so. <laughs> I mean, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I mean, they're huge now to just brew in town, and now it's like in grocery stores where I'm from in Ohio. Like, it's cool. If you're into the craft beer world, you know all about New Holland, which started brewing in 1996. But six years later, they entered the craft spirits world thanks to a well-timed vacation. The president and owner, Brett Vanderkamp, had a, uh, a trip basically down to Puerto Rico okay, um, where he kind of kindled a passion for spirits um, through rum down there. Um, kind of took that back up here to Michigan, took a lot of knowledge and experience what we had on the brewing side and kind of transferred that over to the distilling side. We're very fortunate to live in the country that produces bourbon. There's so much high quality whiskey and bourbon on the market. Um, that we needed to be innovative in what we do. So we're making a lot of the traditional type spirits, but we're, we're also putting our own twist on it. One of those twists is using old bourbon barrels that age their signature Dragon's Milk Stout to create New Holland's most popular spirit, Beer Barrel Bourbon. What if we took, uh, you know, the aged beer cast now, the Dragon's Milk, and put uh, bourbon into it, and what would happen? And, you know, there were a lot of people that said it couldn't happen. Some people that were maybe purists in the distilling world were, oh, you won't want to do that. And so we started with, I think, two or three casts of laying it down, some different temperatures, some different times. And what we discovered was that uh, the, the, the play, the marriage between the malt sugars and the bourbon, had this amazing effect and it actually layered in a bunch of complexity. We're very pleased with, with that process as well. New Holland loves to reuse as much as they can, which led us to their Barrel Works project, where they take old oak barrels and turn them into works of art. Right now I'm just deconstructing barrels that we use for our Dragon Smoke program and making a lot of different products out of them. Uh, tap handles, openers, furniture, and then everything else that the pub needs. So we've got signs, we've got... Beach chairs, beach tables. I'll do full barrels with the top on it for tables. Did a lot of lighting for the Knickerbocker and Grand Rapids. Cool. Um, some shelving there, and I'm still pretty busy with that kind of stuff. <laughs> Brett Vanderkamp really kind of respects art and really has a value for it, so I think that's kind of why I'm still here. I think it really sets you guys apart from any other distillery I've been to. I don't, I've never seen a workshop within a distillery. Yeah, me neither, especially something kind of as kind of quirky as this. It's more of an art studio than a wood shop. Um, just lots of inspiration kind of hanging around and just lots of fun stuff going on. I have to ask you your name, Coop. Is it short for Cooper? Nope, uh, no affiliation with my name at all. Um, started with 
What's your name? My name is Steve. <laughs> hey, Steve. Everyone knows me as Coop. Um, it's always been Coop since I've been here. But yeah, a person who builds a barrel is a Cooper. Oh, cool. So I was kind of deconstructing barrels. So I was the anti-Cooper, then just Cooper, then just Coop. And then we got name tags, and it was Coop. And now I don't think anyone really knows my real name. <laughs> Not only is New Holland looking good thanks to repurposing used bourbon barrels, the company is becoming more and more well known for their spirits. Recently they opened a brand new pub in Grand Rapids called the Knickerbocker, named after their flagship gin. Gin is starting to be huge for us. Um, there's a lot of creativity in that category in terms of the flavors that we can produce out of it and it's kind of an unexplored area for spirits in our opinion. And we have uh, a nice system going in down in the Knickerbocker that will be experimenting further with concepts. Something we can push out into our restaurants for retail bottle sales, but also cocktails, kind of play around with that whole theme and that concept of what could gin be. The Knickerbocker is a huge building, but make sure you head upstairs to the cocktail lounge to get a chance to see New Holland's spirits in action. All right, we'll be making the Clover Club with our Blue Haven gin that is made with Michigan blueberries. So, we're gonna be making the Clover Club, which is a super old school cocktail. Um, it was originally made for a men's gentleman's club. You know, men like to drink. Um, <laughs> turns out they like to drink uh, beautiful fruity concoctions, because we will see that uh, by today's standard, this is looks more like a drink for a female. We add uh, two ounces of Blue Haven gin, three quarter ounces fresh squeezed lime juice, and then this is a raspberry syrup we make ourselves. The key to this cocktail though, after we shake it up with these ingredients, is we'll uh, dry shake it with egg whites, which uh, adds a frothy foam. And we will add our egg white. And this is where you gotta shake the crap out of it. I don't know the science behind it, but the uh, properties of the egg white take out some of the harshness of any alcohol you use with it. Um, so it's been classically used in cocktails for a very long time. Now remember, as I pour this, that this is what a uh, bunch of grizzly dudes like to drink back in the day. A fruity, delicious, old school cocktail. How do I like to say this? Our brewers hate to make the wash, but they love our whiskey. We're kind of the stepchild in the company, uh, but we've been growing and kind of maturing in, in what we're doing. Honing a lot of our skills and people are really starting to like it. If you go down to the pub, a lot of our employees are usually drinking cocktails versus beer at this point. Oh wow. It's nice. There's a culture a big... shift. Yes, it is. It's really fun to see. Lisa, it's been a great episode. We've had some fantastic drinks. We met some great people. Yeah, it's been exciting, and I can't wait to see what else the craft distilling industry in Michigan has in store.